Welcome to our Analytical Queries video tutorial. Analytical queries of the Prognos platform provide a convenient graphical user interface for creating ad hoc reports and performing OLAP analysis. Analytical queries enable you to create OLAP reports and represent data in tables, charts, maps, and trees. For the purpose of visual representation, analytical queries provide tools to filter and sort data and perform conditional data formatting. Analytical queries help calculate computable indicators in real time, perform 80-20 analysis, and build trends. In addition, the tool supports data representation via mapping services such as Google, Bing, Yandex, and so on. So, what do analytical queries look like? The tools window consists of a work area where different data representations appear and a side panel to control data representations in the work area. The tool enables you to visualize data using a number of formats table and map, chart and bubble chart, bubble tree and tree map. You can synchronize data representations in visualizers. To do so, place data representations on a single sheet. In our case, we synchronize table and map views. Let's create a new OLAP report. As data sources for your report, you can use multi-dimensional cubes and time series databases. Folders in the repository are filtered automatically by available data sources in order to facilitate the search for a desired object. The tool enables you to load data from files of different formats. To import data, select Data Import in the main menu or in the side panel. Let's use an Excel file as a data source for the OLAP report. We click Done to complete Import Setup. The data source is created with default settings. The Advanced Settings button enables you to define a specific set of properties for each type of imported file. To display file data in map view, we bind the created data source to an existing country dictionary. To this end, let's consider other import options. On the next page of the wizard, you may correct data formats, the names of fields, and contents. If necessary, you may correct bindings of source fields to the dimensions of the future data consumer. Then, we need to select the data consumer. You can import data to a new data consumer by specifying its name and the folder where it will be created. An existing data source may be used as a data consumer. To use an existing data source, bind all imported dimensions to dimensions of the selected data consumer. Let's import Excel data to the new World Bank cube and place it in the data sources folder. When creating a new data source, you may also bind imported dimensions to previously created dictionaries. Let's select an existing country dictionary and bind it by key field. And now, we should save the object for import. After data import, the OLAP report created on the basis of the Excel file data appears. Let's customize it. To do so, we check appropriate elements for all cube dimensions. Column headers now contain dates and rows contain territories. Let's leave the layout of all dimensions as it is. First of all, we need to select data for the period of six years from 2005 to 2010. Then, we select all countries in South America. We select the Fixed Dimension and Gross National Income Atlas method in the Indicator Dimension. As a result, we get a table containing data on the Gross National Income Atlas method of the South American countries for the period from 2005 to 2010. To hide empty rows and columns in the table, Let's use data filtering. Now we need to save the OLAP report and name it. You can add a header to the report sheet, including a simple header or a header with controls. Let's display the report name and its heading. To do so, we select the added header and remove the displayed fact and indicator from it. And then we select the desired report name representation from the title tab of the tool ribbon. Now we need to set the header format. Analytical queries enable you to perform simple data transformations. For example, you can analyze changes in the gross national income of the South American countries. In addition, you can rank table data based on cell values and selected conditions. For example, you can use the ranking function to find out which South American countries demonstrated the highest growth in terms of gross national income in 2010. Let's return to the initial table view by removing ranking and transformations. To do so, click the reset buttons. Under the Table tab of the toolbar, you can find Advanced Data Table Settings. For example, you can rotate the table by transposing columns and rows. To make the representation of changes in data more visually compelling, 
You can add small charts to table rows or columns. Let's specify lines by rows. A new column with charts displaying data series trends appears. To consider other options of table data formatting, we return to the initial table view. The Formatting Style menu enables you to color tables according to predefined color layouts. By applying conditional formatting, you can highlight cells depending on their values. For example, you can highlight the most significant changes in indicators in the table. You can also make reports more visually compelling by adding growth or decline arrows. These show changes as compared to the neighboring columns or rows in each cell. Analytical queries support methods for analyzing value distribution. Analysis is performed based on the data in the selected column. By default, the platform uses the 80-20 method. Now, let's work with source data and disable 80-20 analysis. Analytical queries support calculations of totals such as sum, mode, median, and so on. For example, we can estimate average gross national income of countries in South America. The report provides access to such advanced analytics capabilities as modeling and forecasting, time series analysis, and many others. We've demonstrated how to represent data in tables. Let's learn how to represent data in charts. A chart is built based on data contained in the table. To make the most impact, charts often benefit from simple configuration and a smaller set of table data. The content of the format side panel depends on the type of active chart. The chart tab is common for all types of charts. It contains common parameters and settings for the current type of chart. Here, you can choose the desired chart type, such as linear, histogram, pie chart, scatter chart, and so on. An advanced list of available chart types, including donut and step charts, is provided on the chart tab of the tool ribbon. To display contribution of each country to the total amount, let's select absolute stacking histogram. The legend tab enables you to control the location and display of the legend. Using the legend, you can enable and disable series representation in the chart. The plot area tab enables you to set the look and feel of the chart's plot area. For example, you can set up the fill parameters of the plot area or disable the fill altogether. On the Data Series tab, you can customize the visual representation of each data series. You can also move a data series to a secondary axis or enable data labels. Analytical queries support data view customization using the context menu of the data series. In order to display only the desired series, select them and then choose the Keep Values item from the context menu. For example, Let's fine-tune the chart by displaying data on South American countries for 2007 only. To return to the initial chart view, you can click the Reset button on the ribbon or select Hidden Elements on the Selection tab of the side panel. We've demonstrated how to represent data in tables and charts. Now, let's represent data on a map. When you move to Map View, territory and calendar dimensions are defined automatically. The dimension to set up observed objects is also defined. Let's choose the indicator's dimension as metrics. Let's choose GDP growth as the color indicator. For display parameters, you can use predefined color layouts to customize color formatting or set up formatting manually. Let's select the 3D map representation and add one more indicator to the map, the height indicator. As the height indicator, we select the number of internet users. Once we add the second indicator, the height legend appears on the map. Now, the map shows two indicators. One is represented by color gradient. The other is represented by territory height. Let's place legends to the center across the bottom of the map to make it more user-friendly. If you need to display data on additional indicators, use microcharts, such as pie charts or columns. You can rotate the map to view it at any convenient angle. You can track indicator changes in dynamics using the timeline. Let's save the current report as the new OLAP report by giving it a new name. As you can see, the report header takes the new name. Analytical queries support integration with mapping services via a plugin. For example, you can display the color indicator on Google Maps. For more details on how to enable the plugin, please refer to the Prognos platform guides. Let's move on to the next form of data representation, the bubble chart. The bubble chart is a special chart that enables you to represent up to four indicators simultaneously. The first two indicators are observation object coordinates along the vertical and horizontal axis. The third indicator is the bubble's diameter, and the fourth one is its color. 
When the color indicator is not specified, the legend displays observation objects, in our case, countries. To select indicators for display on the bubble chart, we need to select the corresponding dimension as metrics. Now we set up the representation of indicators. Let's display population growth on the horizontal axis and internet users on the vertical axis. GDP growth will serve as the size indicator. Let's save the current report as a new OLAP report by giving it a new name. As you can see, the report header takes the new name. If necessary, on the Format tab of the side panel, you can specify settings for plot area and chart access and enable tooltip display. Like a map, the bubble chart enables you to track indicator changes in dynamics. As you can see, the number of internet users saw active growth during five years. In 2009, GDP slumped in all countries. The population growth decreased in South America countries throughout the selected period. In your OLAP report, you can create several data sheets. Each sheet can contain data from any source with a customized data representation. Let's add one more sheet with data on GDP growth in South American countries as a table. Let's add a report header with controls in order to change the selected dimensions using the header. By default, the header displays the names of selected elements of fixed dimensions. In this case, they are indicator and fact. To set up the representation of header elements, double-click it and then delete unnecessary components. Let's display the indicator represented in the table in a report header. Now, let's use the configured header to represent a new indicator, Gross National Income Growth, in the table. You can export the generated OLAP report to external files, including directly to Microsoft PowerPoint files. You can open the report on your mobile device without publishing it on the server. To do so, export the desired report to a mobile format file. You can make links to created OLAP reports on your corporate website and social networks for further discussion. So, we've created two OLAP reports that can be used for online analysis of socioeconomic indicators. You can work with OLAP tools using both web and desktop applications of the Prognos platform. Our analytical queries video tutorial is over. Thank you for your attention.